So, continuing the story of how I got into pro wrestling, this is how I got into pro wrestling part 5. And this is me, Paola Jasmine Gonzalez. So, last uh, video I think I made a mistake by calling my wrestling backyard ditch, because really wasn't. Um, it's just the phone because it's not like we were poor, we wrestled near my trainer's house, but we also did shows in local businesses, like they will hire us to go and do business as well, so did shows in um, basketball courts that had a ceiling, uh, usually they would be either for a charity or they will um, pay us sometimes. Um, and um, so yeah, during that year, uh, wrestling every weekend. So once I changed my gimmick, about a few months later, um, my trainer comes to me and tells me like, "Hey, um, guess what?" I'm like, "What? What's going on?" Um, you're going to get a belt. I'm like, "What?" Yeah, you're going to get a belt. You come here and train, and you don't complain. You do what you're told. So we're giving you a belt. And out of us, the champion at the time it was a uh, El Warrior, and El Warrior was I got I got a picture here. El Warrior was this guy here, the one with the mask. Um, let me see. I got a better picture here that you can see his mask. Yeah, this is the Warrior. That's me after I won the belt. This is the Black Ninja. This is Eddie Hawks who was. He helped me a lot when I was training. Um, he had more agility than I did, and um, he really helped me a lot uh, when I was training. And um, um, he and uh, my other friend, uh, and I don't have the picture right now. I don't know where I put it. Uh, hopefully, I will find it sometime. Uh, but he and his uh, friend, uh, who used to wrestle as El Hechicero, which is kind of like a uh, wizard kind of thing. Um, he uh, he and his friend they were very helpful to me, and we were kind of like a like a mini clique, pretty much, because uh, we were the younger uh, ones that were in the business. Um, so so we're kind of like the new generation, pretty much, and um, so yeah. Um, so about a year, I changed my gimmick. I ditched the big boss man thing and began wearing boots, tights, and that's when I got my first chance for the heavyweight belt. And I remember the match, and I won by interference. I cheated my way to victory because that's what seals do, you know. And I got the belt. And then I decided that I didn't like the belt too much because the belt, like you can see here, like it doesn't have a lot of color, the belt, and all that kind of stuff. So I decided to take the belt to a friend of mine. And I bought some paint, and we painted it, and uh, we restored the belt. And then um, later on, um, one of the guys who was a little bit away because of uh, nagging injury, he came back. Uh, he was he used to wrestle as a ranger, and he used to wrestle. Uh, he used to wear this um, outfit, uh, outfit um, with uh, red uh, tights and uh, red and yellow mask, and. Uh, I had a match with him for the top for the championship belt, and um, I remember that that night I ended up I didn't lose the belt, uh, but the match went to a no contest, and uh, because of that, the referee um, the referee froze the belt and all that kind of stuff. So I technically didn't lose the belt by pinfall. Um, which pretty much makes me look stronger. Um, that match was brutal. It, w it was in a sector and there were a lot of people and I remember taking hits everywhere. I even bumped on, on the concrete uh, floor because the basketball courts uh, down in Puerto Rico, they are made out of concrete. And, um, and um, I took a church shot and then I ended up bumping the concrete floor. And then uh, he grabbed me and dragged me to 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 the apron and ended up hitting the the tube because like down in the the, the ring that we have it was so bad and uh, this is the ring and you can see like the tube in there uh, this is me doing a 
uh, T-bone suplex on my trainer. Like, I'm, I'm over there. You can recognize them because of the boots. That's why I changed the boots to a different color. So, with the, the, the hard ones on the outside. Um, so, yeah, like, and then, like, you can see the plywood in there. Like, we didn't have, like, the bars of wood. Like, it wasn't a very flexible ring. It was really tough to, to bump in that ring. Um, so, I ended up um, hitting my head, but um, it, was a, it was part of the apron. But I was still able to finish the match. I wasn't too, too injured. And um, and then I lost the match. And that was it. Um, took a little bit of a break and then came back. And this was one of the last matches that I did before I had an accident um, during one match. So this was pretty much me coming back. And I was working in shows and all that kind of stuff. That's after I lost the title. And... Um, and um, during the match, after I returned back, I was supposed to win, but unfortunately, I took a back body drop in the wrong way. Um, pretty much, um, for those that don't know the back body drop, so it's a move that the person that is doing the move, they bend down, and then the person taking the move, you place your hands on your opponent's back, and then they toss you in the air, and you take a, a flip bump, pretty much, and you land on your back. Um, so when I landed, I landed flat with the back, but I left my, if this is my foot, so I left my foot too close to my body, so I ended up shattering my ankle, uh, in the, one of the bones, so I had to have surgery, and I had to be out for a while, and, um, and after that, um, I waited about a year before returning to wrestling, but at that point, I had just moved to... Uh, Philadelphia for a job and that would be a different story on